the one year podcast anniversary. My name is Rebecca. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Evil Twin 2. You can find show notes on the blog, I'll knit with you .blogspot.com. You can find our group on Ravelry if you search I'll knit with you. Or you can email me at I'll knit with you at gmail.com. Hi everyone, how are my owls and my yous? Can you believe it has been an entire year of inconsistent podcasting? Woo! Um, yeah, I was looking over the number and I really podcast an average of every other week. Now there's sometimes when I'd podcast weekly and sometimes when I wouldn't podcast for a month. Um, I would say it's gonna be different this year, but you guys know me. I sometimes just have nothing to tell you, and sometimes I have everything to tell you. Um, and today is one of the days that I have everything to tell you, so I'm so excited to get started. We have one new friend. Her name is Jilly Things. She is Jill from Ireland. It is nice to meet you, Jill. Um, yeah. If you would like, <laughs> sorry. Jill, you seem very, very sweet. Um, I don't know why I got so weird and quiet there. If you would like to introduce yourselves, you can go to the Ravelry group, Owl Knit With You, and go to the introduction thread, and go in there and say hi to me and everyone else. Um, I usually respond to everyone, that's how I know that I've read it, um, and that's how I know that I've met you on the internet. If you host a podcast, go to the Hey, I'm a Podcaster thread and post your podcast there so I can check it out and everyone else can too. If you're a hexy puff knitter, go to the strut your puffs thread and strut your puffs. Show off your hex puffs. If you like knitting shawls, come join our shawl along. I am going shawl crazy. And when I say shawl crazy, you don't understand. You don't understand how shawl crazy I am right now, but you're going to understand. I'm going to show you how shawl crazy I am right now. Um, so let's move on to some lather. Um, I'm a little caffeinated. It's late at night. I'm filming this later than I wanted to. But you know what? I really wanted to do this this week. So we're doing it. We're doing it. Um, so last week I had just gotten a new lamp. Or last podcast. I got a new lamp where there was lots of reflections on my glasses. And even when I was editing it to like, I watch everything and I edit out the stuff that is just me going, what was that word? That's what I do. Um. There was so much reflection on my glasses because I had tried to not put the um, lampshades on so I would get more light. That is not a good idea. <laughs> they make those for a reason. <gasps> it's crazy. So you should be able to see my eyes a little bit better this week. Um, I really need to get to the optometrist and just get some contacts ordered. That's what it boils down to. I've been wearing my glasses since before Christmas, which is the longest I've worn glasses in a very so, I'm over it. I'm ready to, to not have glasses on my face. But I still have glasses on my face right now. I like my glasses. I think I look cute in them. So shut your mouth. So, uh, yeah, that's going on. Um, I finished, I finished all the Gilmore Girls. And then I wrote a text message fan fiction to my friend Amanda about how I think the next, because here's the thing, at the end of it, um, I'm not going to do any spoilers. Rory gets information that Rory is going to be doing a thing. Pretty vague, right? And they talk about who she's going to be doing that thing with. And... No, I can't even tell you. There's too many spoilers. Um, here, we'll do it this way. I'm going to put my hands up. And this means there's spoilers. So shut your ears. There are spoilers, so shut your ears. Mute your podcast if you don't want to hear what I'm about to say about the end of Gilmore Girls. Um, when I pull my hands down, you can turn the sound back on. I'll even give you a minute, okay? So, spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Um, Rory leaves to go follow President, or at that time, Senator Obama, I think, um, in his press corps. And they joked about how if he was going to be president, she wouldn't be home for a really long time. Well, he's about to not be in office anymore, so they could put Gilmore Girls back up, you know, like where that, where it ended. But like X amount of years later, you know what I mean? So then I wrote a whole thing about how April's taken over the town 
and Lorelai and um, Luke have so many kids and all this stuff. But it was wild. It was crazy stuff. I'm done spoiling. I'm done spoiling. Is your sound on? I'm done spoiling. Is your sound on? Okay. Um, anyway, so that was a really fun watch. I also finished watching Birds of Prey, which is a terrible 90s um, movie based on the Huntress and a few other female superheroes. Um, it's awful. Don't watch that. But I've been watching, like, really cheesy old superhero stuff. I'm currently watching The Flash, but The Flash from the 90s. Um, and his costume is, like, fuzzy. Like... Crushed velvety fuzzy. It's very interesting. It's a very, it's not accurate at all to the comic books, but it's a very interesting story. Um, I cleaned my closet out, which for me is massive because I have a tiny room that's my closet. It's not a walk-in, my apartment is really, really weird. It is like a hallway that's actually a room because it connects my living room and my bedroom, but there's like a corner room that connects the two. It's really hard to describe. It has a closet and a room for other stuff. So, and it had gotten to the point where I had just been like throwing stuff in there, like not cleaning it out, and then using my coat closet as my closet because I was trying to get rid of clothes. It was a whole thing. I spent an entire Saturday, cleaned out my closet like crazy. I have so many clothes to donate, um, and all of my shoes are put away. It is a very weird feeling, and I've been able to maintain it for like a week. So I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty good about this closet cleaning experience. Um, I also learned that a three needle bind off sounds really scary, but I've been doing it all along. So a three needle bind off is basically where you knit through the front, you stick your needle as if to knit through the front, need, okay, okay, hold on, let me try this again. Let's say you're closing a toe, or finishing a hexi puff, which is what I use it for, and you've got two needles that each have X amount of stitches on them, and you're holding them next to their rather than do a kitchener stitch where you're weaving stuff in and out, you just take your third needle and you go as if to knit through the first stitch on the first needle and as if to knit through the, through the first stitch on the back needle and you knit those two together and then you do your normal bind off things where you have two stitches on your right needle, you pull one over. Does that make sense at all? Probably not. I will link to a three needle bind off tutorial just so you can see what it is, but if you've ever thought three needle bind off sounds scary, it's totally not even scary. Not even at all. It is the easiest thing in the whole world. It's crazy easy. Um, other blather I have is that to-do lists... Oh, there goes some yarn. <laughs> to-do lists in my fancy homemade um, journal. Oh, I got rid of my back because it was too big. It was causing my problems. Um, to-do lists are not a good thing. Because when you keep them in one giant list and you keep adding things to them, you run out of page and then things are not marked off like halfway up and you don't see them anymore. So I instead started doing post-it note to-do list pages and like the white stuff is like not in a hurry things and the colored ones are like you should get this done. You should get on that. And so like an orange one says put away my Christmas stuff um, or do the dishes which these things are important whereas like um, starting a recipe book, not as important right now, you know what I mean? And so, um, I'm also made one for the stuff I have to do at work, which is really helping because it's like, then I just pull it off and throw that one away. I just pulled that thing out. Um, whoops. I can just get rid of that one post it note rather than trying to like deeply mark out something on a page, which, you know, can bleed through and all sorts of stuff. I'm crazy rambling tonight, I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah. Look at these post-it note pages now. I really like them. Um, I'm sure other stuff has happened. Oh, my friend Amanda got a new promotion and I'm really excited for her. And I booked tickets. Okay, so this is a bigger thing. Um, SSK stuff has already started like in the prep work for that. Um, and I am going to SSK this year, if you have not seen that podcast, where I get really excited and tell you I'm going. Um, so we are being sorted into teams, and there's some fun, fun knit-alongs, and they are doing a Susan B. Anderson, um, Susan B. Anderson's doing a knit-along, and they worked that into the SSK knit-along, and if you do the knit-alongs, you get, like, door prize tickets to, like, potentially earn more door, door prizes, I think, and so of course you want to do them, because why would you not want that? And so, 
Um, we'll talk more about that shawl, Cal, in a minute. But we also got sorted into teams, and that was fun. So we have like a, a short, small little team. Um, and we are team number one, so I'm in the all for one group. It's very, very exciting. Um, and then another thing that I'm doing this uh, late spring, early summer is Memphis in May, which is, um, I'm doing the Bill Street Music Festival part of it. So I'm going to a three day music festival that I've gone to two or three times before. It's not as like big as other festivals. Um, and the, the tickets are relatively cheap compared to other festivals. And I got our hotel room booked and I got uh, my ticket bought for it. And I'm really excited because I'm going with my friend Amanda and maybe some of our other friends. It's going to be a really good time. So it's going to be like a fun girl vacation that also happens to have a music festival in it. Because why not? Um, so that's all my good blather. If you're going to be at the Memphis uh, Bill Street Music Festival, let me know. And we can totally meet up and like knit through a concert or something. Because that sounds fun. I would do that. Um, okay. Let's get on to blobbins. Now that I've talked about nothing for 20 minutes. Um, I have a lot of blobbins to show you. Are you excited? I'm very excited. So, first off, I have, I had had those naturally knitty um, poonies and rowlogs that I had gotten for Christmas, and I spun them all up. This is Kelpie. It has BFL Cormo Faux Cashmere Firestar Merino in silk. It was two ounces of Kelpie's poonies. So there it is. It's beautiful, and it's purple. I don't know if you're seeing purple or blue, but it's definitely purple. Um, there are some light green pops and teal pops in here um, and some like whiter bits but I really 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 liked how this turned out I think it's awesome um, I did a two ply I just my number of poonies was an even number of poonies uh, which is a fun word to say so say it with me poonies um, I split that I think there was like eight for each side because there was 16 total maybe and then I just uh, put them together and I got so close I think there was like six inches of um, extra on one side which is a really really close ply number because normally you're like way off right so it is beautiful it's a very lovely skein um, I really enjoy it I can't wait to knit it up and it's super super stinking soft so if you're thinking about it you should go check out Naturally Knitty on Etsy and buy some of her boonies because they are they are fantastic um, my consistency is super all over the place. I got really thin at some points, and then other parts are like chunky and thick. I'm not sure how well you can see that with the lights. But anyway, so, um, I mean, you know, it's hand spinning. I just kind of like to go with the flow. I'm not that worried about, like, the overall... So you can see how it's kind of all over the place. I'm not, I'm not really worried about consistency because I'm just spinning this for myself. Um, if I was spinning it for somebody else and they were saying, hey, I want a fingering weight, I would make sure I got a fingering weight. So there's just kind of a range right there of what's going on. I don't know if I was in focus. Anyway, get a little too focused on that. But, um, sorry, I'm going to lean out of frame for a second. I've got to move my box of stuff that's finished. So, um, that was one blobbins. I have more. Yes, yes I do. I also spun up all of the um, fiber samples I had. Wow, I forgot what word I was saying there. All the fiber samples I have, I spun, spun those up. Um, it looks disgusting in the ball, but um, I three plied it, so it will basically just be stripes that never repeat. Um, it looks totally crazy and ridiculous and ugly. It looks pretty ugly right now. I'm not gonna lie. But I think if I knit this up, especially like in a hat or something, I think it's going to turn out super, super fun. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's super hideous. But I think I'll like it when I knit it. I think, I think I'll enjoy that part of it. So I'm okay with it. Um, I have to take a short break because my mom keeps texting me. And if I don't text her back, she's going to think that I'm dead. So be back. I think we're good now. Um, so those are the three things that I have spun. And... Um, I had moved, I've been moving my apartment around a little bit because my brother had lived here for a while and I never got back, um, never rearranged the room that he had lived in that had previously been my TV room. And so now I'm turning into my craft podcast studio. How, how professional does that sound? 
Um, and so as you can see, I've got part of my couch behind me. I still have one more piece of that couch that's in a different room that needs to be moved to this section over here. Um, but I also thought it was kind of a fun throwback because I podcasted on a piece of this couch that was in a different room. Um, it's It can come apart and so I've just been like, this piece can go here and this can go in this part. And it was fine. Um, and then, so I've got my fold out chair, which is a perfect spinning chair because nothing else that I have sits low enough slash they're all uh, okay so when you sit right and you're sitting you know your butt is in back against the back of the chair and your knees should be where the chair stops my legs are really short and that does not work for me so i would have to sit halfway on the cushion to spin which is not very comfortable for my back but in folding chairs it's like everything's the right height and proportion for me so i have to use that um chair that i have been podcasting in to spin with because it's low enough and it's short enough like width wise the seat is short enough does that make sense so i've been spending a lot more and really enjoying it is what i'm trying to say so um hopefully i'll keep that up because it's been a lot of fun so now i have some whips for you to see that was loud um and all the whips i have to show you are shawls so i've been working on my tropical plant pooling and i made a lot of progress and it's all um on one side instead of being in the middle of a Bro. So as you can see, it's really, really fun. This is not a very long cable, so you can't see all of it at once, unfortunately. But I think you can get the gist of it. Um, the lace is turning out really fun, and I really like the pattern that it's turning out to be. Um, it's very, very repetitive because you're literally doing the same like 13 rows over and over again. And I have found that I really like lace, and I really hate the same lace pattern over and over again. So I'm having a hard time getting myself to work on this. And I'm also worried it's not going to be very big, which is ludicrous because the skein of yarn was like 1,200 yards. And I'm going to use all of it, I hope. But I'm at, um, I'm 13 grams shy of halfway right now. So either I, my skill was not set correctly or um, this shawl is going to be the weirdest shape ever and it's basically going to be a large handkerchief. So I mean we'll just see how it goes and it's kind of hard to tell how wide it is because I, I can't tell because I have to stop where the needle stops so it doesn't fall off. So maybe I'll put this on a larger cable and really spread it out because maybe it's really really wide already and I just can't tell. But it's not very long. It's not very long. But um, I've got a couple things to get off the needles and then I will plow back into this. I have to be halfway before the end of February and done before the end of March. So that is coming along um, slowly-ish. I'm just not working on it. I'm just not. I'm just interested in other things right now and you're gonna see. You're gonna see what I'm talking about. So my other whip is another shawl because I'm shawl crazy. I'm super shawl crazy you guys. Um, the SSK slash Susan B. Anderson knit along was for any of her shawls which is great because I'm doing a shawl knit along you guys so yes all of the shawls forever um, this also needs to be on a longer needle because it is super bunched up right now so all of any of Susan's shawls are game and I picked drawing nye because it really appealed to me like I just her other shawls are really great but this one was so different I think I was just like ooh that's different I like it um, and you, it's all fingering weight yarn, and you hold it double to create all sorts of cool effects. And so, um, let me show you what I got so far. So this is the looking glass. It's a Knit Picks fingering. And then it goes into some um, fin that I got from Fibertown that I won from her podcast. That's this right here. But then you see in the in-between where you're merging the two, you hold one strand of each. So that you get like a really good mix. So it like makes it more of a gradient. It makes the jump less big. And then um, this dark green at the bottom is yarn that I dyed this summer. Uh, if you've seen it, it was that giant massive thing of green wool. That I still haven't spun all of it. I spun about half of it. Um, I still haven't gotten all the dye washed out of it. And so when I knit with it or spin with it, there's just green everywhere. So this is my next color. So then... Um, the shawl so far, the patterning is pretty simple, and again, it's it's a lace repeat that just 
repeats and repeats and repeats. But because of the color changes and the other things you're doing in the shawl, it's really interesting. So hypothetically, based on the pattern, I should only have one more color change. But I really like the weight of this, like because it's basically a worsted weight shawl, because you're holding fingering double, which equals a worsted weight. I would love for it to be like mini cloakish. Like I want a big, nice, lovely, squishy thing. And so I picked out some more yarns that I'm going to use. So um, right now I'm in the middle of this ball of yarn. This is what I spun of what I dyed. And I'm going to go from this to this. So I'm kind of bouncing between blues and greens here for a little bit. And this is a lot like the fin um, from Fibertown that I had won because that one actually had all sorts of like purples and teals in it. It's like a darker version of that. And so, and it's got sparkles in it, so it kind of just wins. Um, this is Cascade something shiny something something. You can check my project page for more information. Um, and then I'm going to go, I think, like this dark teal. So that's going to go here. I don't have this many fingers. Hold on a second. Let me rearrange these yarns. So like that. And then... Maybe back to green, I haven't decided yet. Maybe back to green, maybe not. And then to this really dark, um, it's not a navy. It actually has both green and blue in it and the colorway name is stuck in the arm so I can't actually read it. Um, okay, but again, you can check my project page to see all the different yarns I'm using. So I'm not sure which one would come next. Maybe this way, maybe that way, I don't know yet. I think this way would work best because this has some green in it so then take it back to a green would be okay and this green actually has some teal um, fire star in it but it's really hard to find I kind of just threw it in there for funsies so this uh, it's hard to stretch my fingers like that okay this is the next five balls of yarn I'm using um, and so normally you would not do these four you would just stop at this green no you would stop okay Hold on. Normally you would stop after these two colors. So I'm going to be adding an extra three colors to it um, to make it longer. And if I get real crazy, I might add more. Like I'll, I would add them in between these. Like I would be like, oh, one more color. But so far I think I'm just, whoops, just going to do these three. Um, I just want the biggest, most awesome shawl ever. These are both Knit Picks. This is hand spun. It's actually Will of the Andes from Knit Picks. Um, but I will make sure to enter these all into my project page so you guys can find them if you want them. But I'm really stinking excited. And I can consistently knit through about a skein per sitting as long as I have a couple hours to sit. Um, because you're holding it double, so it's like you're knitting half as much. And um, the original project calls for size 8 needles, but since I knew I'd be doing hand spun and my hand spun's kind of all over the place, and it's not just fingering, I went ahead and went up to a size 10 and I'm so glad I did. Because this fin, even though um, I had it in as fingering, it was m like, it's hand spun, so it's not as consistent. And so, um, but I really liked that about it. And so, it is much puffier than like the actual store-bought Knit Picks hand spun, or Knit, knit Picks fingering weight. But I appreciate that about it. And so, I'm just really excited to see how this goes. And I'm so excited to finally use this fin because I've had it for just about a year. Um, and it's really cool because I, when I got the fin from Fibertown, it was like one of the first prizes I won, I was like, this means I have to start a podcast. And now here I am showing it to you on my podcast, being it up. Ah, it's so exciting. I'm stupid excited about it. Whatever. You guys. I'm so excited. And so um, those are my two uh, whips. They are my woes and my woes, but mostly they're just like woes, woes, woo woo. I'm excited about both of them. Um, I mean, the trailing, the trailing, the um, tropical pulling lace, although it is a little very tropical, um, is kind of boring. I also know that I can work on it. Like it's not like insufferable. It's all right. It's all right. I can do this. Um, I do have some FOs to show you guys. As long as you don't count all the spinning FOs. So, um, it's really nasty and cold right now, and I really wanted to make some fingerless gloves. I don't really know why, but I really wanted to make them. And the pieces of eight, um, 
pieces of eight pattern has always appealed to me. Um, and I was like, I'm going to knit those. I am. And so I grabbed some yarn I had and I made this one. This one is super stinking small. It is too small. It, it, I can't open my hand very far. Um, the colors are fun, but I actually pulled this from a different ball of yarn so it would like pop more. Um, and it was okay, but I didn't love it. Look how tiny that is. That is too tiny. And so I said, I'm going to start over. I don't need this. And I made um, this awesome pair. Hold on. You're going to see. Just wait a second. Um, I made this awesome pair from just the red. Um, and you can see all the swirlies and stuff like this. And the pieces of eight are worked flat, uh, minus a thumb, which is worked circular. And then you make them swirly. And it's so much fun. And these fit, I think they fit pretty great. Um, they aren't much bigger, but they're just big enough. That's the wrong hand. To, um, to fit really well. And the nice thing is, is because they're swirly patterned, they kind of dip on the palm. And so the back of your hand is covered. And then um, your palms are less covered. Does that make sense? But the swirl is really fun. I really dig the swirl. Um, it's really hard not to get the swirl on the palm of your hands because the swirl is really like on the edge, which is really hard to show you guys. Um, here, I'll flatten this one out. That's really where the swirl is. Can you see that? But I really like these mitts and I've gotten a ton of compliments on them from non-knitters. So they must just look crazy impressive or something. Uh, you should knit them. The pattern's a little confusing, but, um, which is also part of the reason I re just restarted all over because that one had a lot of mistakes in it, but I had a lot of fun. These are awesome. Pieces of eight mitts. Speaking of shawls, except not really, I finished my Dances with Dragon shawls. That's why it wasn't in the whips, you guys, and it's crazy gigantuan. Um, I can't even show it to you because it's so big. It is Bigger, it's longer than I am tall. So it's about six feet long, and I am five foot tall. Um, the bead work really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, and I really, really like how it turned out. Um, I thought it was going to be a take forever thing because you knit the edge first. So this whole lacy border pattern thing, you knit that first. And then you go back... And you finish it up with this top part. Um, and I didn't realize that's all it was, was just some extra stuff on top. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not even going to finish this edging before the end of the month, much less the whole entire shawl. And so once I got that done, I mean, it was like off my, that's, I binge watched Gilmore Girls and I finished this shawl. That's pretty much what happened. Um, and so it's awesome. It turned out great. And I got it done in a month so I could turn it in for a class which is also great for the house cup and I just freaking love it. I actually haven't really worn it yet because um, I was so excited about it. I didn't want anything to happen to it and it's been in my podcasting box for a while because so I didn't want to forget to show you guys. So I love it. It's awesome. It's going to keep me really stinking warm coming up here. Um, and I like how big it is because I like to mul multiply wrap things around me multiple times um because you know my ears are cold pull up pull up the shawl in the back cover your ears why not so that is three shawls you guys which is kind of insane and you're gonna think it's more insane when i tell you what i'm gonna tell you here in a second so i have been hankering to knit a sweater yes yes laugh all you want um it is the pixelated sweater I will post a link in the show notes if you've never heard of it. I don't have a picture to show you right now. Um, but I want to do it from a stash that I've already got from a sweater I've already knit. So I knit that awesome three-in-one sweater. And I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough of the dark gray and the red. So I bought another. I have a whole other um, skein of this in the red. So I thought it would be fun because I didn't even finish either one of those for the sweater. I still have. I mean... This is from that sweater, from the original scheme. There's like 600 yards in them. It's a crazy amount of yarn. So I thought it'd be fun to knit a sweater using just part of those colors, because the, the green, okay, so the Dances with Dragons is the green from that sweater. It's a sport weight um, blue moon fibers. That's what this is. That's why it's so big, because I use sport weight instead of fingering or lace. That's part of the reason it's massive. And I knew that. I knew that was gonna happen. So now I have 
plenty of the red left. I don't know what I'm doing with that yet. But I think this would make a really cute pixelated sweater. So the yellow um, would be my main color. The dark gray would go on the bottom part of the sweater and the light gray would go on the top of the sweater for the pixelated look. That's my idea. I need to do some math and make sure this is going to work because I haben't done that yet. And then I also do the Amy Herzog um, fit to flatter math to make sure that all my bosoms have room, basically. So I have a whole other skin to this, so this could be my main color, but that's really dark. Uh, but it would kind of be fun just to have the yellow as a pop of color. So I have to do some thinking about all this stuff. Um, I really think I'll be fine color-wise. I've already bought the pattern, so I'm ready to go on math-wise. But before I'm allowed to start this, I have to finish my two shawls because one of them is my OWL for the house cap and that has to get done. Um, I'm also doing a order mission but that's spinning so that I'm gonna be doing that anyway. It's not a big deal. So this is a maybe hopeful kind of thing. Um, I'm just worried that by the time I get my stuff finished it will have warmed up and I will be out of the sweater, sweater season and I won't get to wear it for like all of summer which would suck. Um, so I'm kind of on a fence about it still. Like, I really want to do it, but I don't want to wait too long. So I don't know what to do. But all the shawls that I'm knitting equal, like, two sweaters. So now I just don't know what to, I don't know what to do. So I might put a poll up in the thread, sweater or no sweater. Um, I probably wouldn't get to start until March. So that's where I'm at. Now, I have several things that you simply mustache. I had gotten a gift card for Eat Sleep Knit, which is a major addiction of mine, because they have crazy good marketing. Crazy good marketing. One more time, crazy good marketing. They have what's called, I don't, they don't like spawn on this podcast, I'm just obsessed. Um, they have what's called the Yarnathon, and it resets every year, New Year's Day. So, um, you don't have progress from the last year, anything like that. And so what you do is when you buy your yarn, they track it for you in miles and kilometers, as well as yards. And they'll say, you're 2,000 yards away from hitting your 5K or from hitting your five mile yarnathon. It's like a marathon, but with yarn, um, where the yards equal miles. So last year I hit five miles and I got a cute little like, um, set to knit because they also sort through the teams and this year this is so perfect I'm on the outlets and I think there's an emphasis on shawls in that word somewhere the shawlets the outlets it might just be an outlet I don't remember I'll look it up and let you know I know you're saying but what did you buy Rebecca I bought so much lace so I've been daydreaming of the old world shawl, which is like a 2,000 yard shawl. And I know that we just had the whole shawl fiasco where um, I was like, I'm gonna do the Twas the Night before, or the Twas the Night after Christmas shawl. And then it was too big for me because it was like 2,000 yardage. But I've been daydreaming of the old world shawl for like two years. So it, it, gets, it gets the advantage. And I may go back and knit the Twas the Night after Christmas shawl. Um, I just wasn't prepared for that much yardage and I feel really bad about that. So I bought these skeins of lace, and this is kind of the gradient that I'm expecting. I did post a picture of this on Instagram. It's really hard to hold, hold this. I thought about running a piece of string through all of it, but I did not do it. I don't know why. Um, so I will show them to you individually because this is kind of like holding five babies at once. Um, all of the yarn is Malabrigo in the Baby Silk Pack of Lace. Uh, it's 50 grams, approximately 420 yards. This is Periwinkle. This is just lace, not the silk pack of lace, because there are two or three skeins that are just their 100% um, baby merino wool, which is 470 yards, it's a little bit more. This is Kuazaro, but we're still working out of the Malabrigo lace section. This is Kuazaro, but in the silk packa, because I bought, I bought two, like, so you can see like how much that varies because the shine really darkens that color. And so then I bought one of each because I needed some in-between colors to, to fill out my 2,000, color, 2000 yards. Um, I've got Violetta's. This is Silk Packa. 
I got Abril, and this is Silpaca. I got Purple Mystery. This is also Silpaca, and this is the purpliest purple that's probably going to show up so, so very blue. Let me see if I can do some sort of white balance with my notebook. It is the purpliest purple. I promise. Um, maybe you could see it better over here. And I got, um, Lavanda, which is just the, um, just the lace. So, then all together, I just don't think I can pick this all up and show it to you, but I want to so bad. Come here, you. All together, I, th oh, nope, didn't work. <laughs> I think it'll make a really beautiful shawl, um, and in the old word world, they had suggested a gradient kit that's no longer being sold. And so that was part of the reason why this was like really motivating for me. Um, so now I have this when I want to do it. And I'm going to get into a little bit of house cup stuff for just a second. Then I'm going to go back to mustache. Um, 2,000 yards is enough for a newt. And a newt is like if you have completed four owls, which I am currently, um, I think this one will be my third. So I would still have to wait one more term after the next term. So like two terms from now I can do it. Um, because 2,000 yards is a lot to do when you're already trying to do like six projects a month and then a bunch of side stuff. So I could go ahead and attempt it, but like I want to make sure that I have time to do it and that it's not going to be stressful and overwhelming for me. And I want to take my time and I want it to just look perfect and stunning. So I don't... I don't want to rush it. And if I do it in any other space besides for a newt, I'm going to be rushing it. I just I just will be. I know I will be. And so um, this is going to be a future newt for me. I've already got it all picked out, ready to go. I might even go ahead and swatch. I'm not really sure. Um, but I wanted to show it to you before I caked it up. So this was the last time you'll see it until it's caked up. Ah, how exciting. Anyway, so more mustache. Um, I had mentioned that I was going to be part of a bat club. And I got my first bat from the bat club. Uh, and it is called Sweet Tarts. I will post a link to the... Oh, no, wait. There's one in here. It is Phoenix Fiber Company. That is the company on Etsy who is doing these crazy awesome bats. So here, here it is. I'm going to open it up for you. So it's kind of all the colors of Sweet Tarts. Look at how beautiful. I'm a big purple fan. I'm really into purple right now. I'm not really sure why. Um, but you may have noticed, I like purple a little bit, as you have seen in everything that I've shown you today. Um, so here is the inside of it, but then here is the outside of it. So I'm real. I almost spun this up before I even could show you guys the bat, but I was like, no, come on, we gotta, one thing at a time. Uh, it helps that I haven't entered it in Ravelry yet, because that stops me from spinning things up. Because I haven't taken very many pictures of it. There's like, if you look in here, you can see there's just so much spark. So I'm really excited to see how this spins up. I think it'll be really awesome and really pretty. I think the bats are 2 ounce bats or 2.5 or something like that. They're not massive. Um, but it is very fluffy feeling. Which is nice because some of the stuff I've been dealing with is more compact. Like I really like the idea of poonies. And poonies are probably really great for spindle spinning. Um, but I really wanted to spinning wheel spin. And so poonies are not so great for spinning wheel spinning. Because... They tend to kind of get knotted on themselves a little bit, at least the way I spend them. But this awesome bat should be awesome. So looking forward to that. <laughs> looking forward to that. And then I have one more thing. It was my final shipment from um, Supernatural Yarns Walking Dead Yarn Club. Which now means that I have 16 of ready to go sock yarn. Which is more than I've been able to say for a very long time. None of it's self striping, but that's okay. You don't always need self striping. So this one is they're screwing with the wrong people. It just sounds so tough, so tough. Um, it's got some reds and some awesome grays in it. Get off that thing. One of the reasons I wanted this lamp is so I could take pictures of yarn at night because I hadn't been able to do that very well. Love the way she lined these up. I just, I don't know. It's really intriguing to me. But at the same time, you get all this depth right here where it's like perfectly not mixed, but all mixed. You know what I mean? Like the colors aren't muddled. 
but she somehow does it anyway. I don't know. That woman, she knows what's up. Um, I hadn't been able to take pictures of my yarn at night. Oh, look at that. And so part of the reason I got these lights is so that I can do that. Now, what I got light-wise, if you're curious, it was a really cheap, uh, like, party-looking lamp where it's got, like, the five different color shades and then five spots for light bulbs. But then I bought day bulbs, which are a white light instead of a blue or a yellow light, like a fluorescent. Um, and so I feel like the colors are more correct. And they are what is equal to 100 watts. So it is significantly brighter than the single overhead light bulb that I had before in here. Um, this is Terminus. I thought this was going to be more gray and yellow, and it is more like blue and gray and yellow, um, which I'm okay with. I'm not, at first I was like, what? But then I started thinking about it, and I was like, I kind of like this. I kind of like this a whole lot. And the other thing is, is that she did it, and the blue and the yellow never once, not even for one, you know, molecule of this yarn, never do they make um, green. There is no green. There's a little, I mean, it might look like green on screen, but there really isn't any green. So we've got this like dingy gray, and then this sunshiny yellow, and then this like sunflower yellow maybe? And then this like dark gray blue that I just totally adore. So another total win for me. Like I just love this stuff. And I'm so bummed that I'm not in her uh, club anymore. And I would love to do another club soon, but now I have six skeins of yarn that I need to knit with. I've been doing podcasting for one year. Um, if you would like to see how much I've learned, feel free to go back and watch my first episode. No, please don't do that. It's awful. Um, I have filmed now in every room of my house, except for the bathroom and my closet. Because I started out in my living room. My, but at that time was like just the walkthrough room because this used to be my living room. Um, then I did it for a very long time in my bedroom, uh, cause my bedroom is kind of a weird shape, and so I would do it by the door. Um, and now I'm back in my spare bedroom, cause I have, I have a two bedroom apartment. Um, I know, fancy, right? Uh, so now I'm in here doing my podcast. So, um, I don't think you want to see my bathroom or my closet as a podcast space. That's not what I'm into. Um, I have made a lot of friends, and I... I'm blown away by how many people are in my group and respond when I post something. Like, it's crazy. Like, I switched that whole, um, this is what I usually cut out. I switched that whole shawl and along thing a couple times, um, over the course of everything going on. And people were in there. Like, I hadn't even podcasted about it yet. People were talking about it. Which, by the way, the shawl and along will be ending the end of March. I had said something different, I think, and I had posted a couple different dates. I've been changing it a couple times. The end of March is the end of the knit along. So you have, from whenever you started, it has to be started um, no earlier than the 26th of December and finished no, and put, and you have to post it no later than um, the last day of March. I will close it that at my midnight, Central Standard Time Zone. Um, and when you post your FO in the thread, because it's a chatter and FO thread, uh, just tag it, um, put a text in the bottom that says my FO. That way when I search for the post containing that, it will only bring up finished objects. So if you don't push that, or you don't add that, I will not see your finished object. So you know. Um, so I just want to say thank you again to you guys, because you're awesome. And thank you for being fantastic listeners and watchers. And awesome people in general who are super sweet and nice to me. Um, I'm having a blast. So now I have a very tiny announcement. Very tiny. On the end of my last episode, I put if you're it was on the slate at the end that says like hey this music is da 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 blah 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 blah. Um, I put if you are reading this, just PM me the word water. Um, for project water. So, Project Water is how, okay, it's not a prize drawing. Um, I have saved all of the PMs that I've gotten, and no one else is allowed to submit a PM, so I feel like, oh shoot, I didn't watch that one yet. 
It's too late. It is closed. Project Water is full. It's to capacity. Anyone who was able to jump in the Project Water bandwagon, I will be gifting you a pattern on Ravelry. But not right now. Um, every month, I'm going to pull a name out. Because I was going to buy them all at once. That's a lot of money. That's a significant amount of money. So, um, you need to have a wish list. And if you don't know how to make one, go back to my earlier podcast or send me a PM and I will help you figure it out. Um, I will be gifting you all a pattern when I get to you. Um, so I'm going to put your names in a thing and I will draw a name every month. You'll know, I'm not going to do the same person twice. Is this, is this making sense? You'll all get a pattern, uh, but not right away. That's how it works. So, um, congrats to you for paying attention. That was kind of my one year giveaway, but I didn't want to make a big deal out of it because I was trying to be like, if you're watching, then you get a prize. But the honest thing is, is like, I would not have caught that on someone else's podcast. So there's that. So if you did not catch Project Water, knit a shawl and you'll win a prize that way. Um, and very likely it'll be that I gift someone a pattern. Unless I find something that I need to give you guys. Which, which might happen. I don't know. Um, okay, so if you do not have a wish list and you sent me the word water, make yourself a wish list. It's super easy. So, now I'm going to jump into some house cap stuff if you don't want to stick around for that. I appreciate that. That's okay. Um, so, yeah. So, house cap stuff. We just started a new term. I did get both rounds of Quidditch in. I did get six classes in. I'm not halfway on my owl or on my mission. But my mission is spend ten ounces worth of stuff. So, I'm already two ounces in with my um, naturally nitty skein of yarn that I just forgot what it was called. Kelpie. So I'm two ounces in. I have eight ounces left to go. Um, this bat's another two ounces, I believe. 2.5 maybe. So that's four. I really want to spin um, a couple other things that I've got. So I would like to clear out some of my older stash of that so it doesn't get too, like, compressed. Um, so that's kind of my plan. If I can get my um, Susan B. Anderson shawl done for a class, that would be awesome because... Um, I don't really have anything else that I want to submit it for. Like, it's not, I also thought it'd be really good as the head mistress challenge, which this term is just using up stash, and it can be however many yards you want, and that ends mid-March. So if I don't get it done in time, that's what I'll submit it for. Um, but I don't see that really happening. And I might just, like, save it and see if I have a class to submit it to, and if I don't, then I'll just submit it for the head mistress challenge. Because it'll be a significant amount of yardage. Um, although since I'm holding it double, I only count half of it. So like if you knit 200 yards held double, you only count 100 yards. Which might seem kind of like you're getting cheated. But on the other hand, when you spin stuff, you count the ply. So if it's a 100 yard 2 ply yarn, it counts for 200 yards. So I mean, you get you give and you get. You give and you get. Um, I don't have very much other house cup news besides that. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun. I feel like I'm getting a lot of points. So that's what I have to say about it. So thank you guys for one year. And remember, whether you're watching the first episode or this one, I'll knit with you. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.